I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today because it's time. It's finally time to release the first results from my super awesome battery testing. You know the battery testing I've been teasing you guys about for months while I tried to get it up and running? It's up and running, and I finally finished testing the very first batteries. The Thunder Power Adrenaline 1600 milliamp hour 95C and the Tattoo R-Line 1550 milliamp hour 95C. These have got to be two of the best batteries on the market. I'm not saying they're the best, but they got to be up there, right? So let's see how they did, and let's see which one is better. Before we get into the results of the testing, can I just say how thrilled I am to finally be able to bring you guys actual results. I raised money uh, to buy these it's a pretty expensive battery test machine. I did a GoFundMe and a whole lot of people contributed a, a whole lot of money. Thank you so much to you guys. The only thing that has been keeping me from bringing you results, it's been like three months now since I actually got the money, has been my desire to make sure these results are as accurate and trustworthy as possible. I'm always looking for ways to make the protocol better, but I feel, you remember I used to do a bunch of battery testing? I feel I started to feel like that wasn't accurate and repeatable enough, and that's why I wanted to raise money to buy this test machine and uh, and, and to do the testing that I'm doing here. So I'm finally at a level or at a place where I feel like these the I mean, test protocols are good enough to present you with results, and I'm super super happy to bring you these first results, and hopefully many more now that now that the ball is rolling. Hopefully bring them out more. So the batteries we're looking at in this video are the Thunder Power Adrenaline 1600 milliamp hour 4 cell 95C and the Tattoo R-Line 1550 milliamp hour 4 cell 95C. Two, well gosh, I mean they're two really good batteries, right? They both going to they should be spectacular. They they're used by racers. They were the, some of the most requested batteries in my poll where I asked what batteries should I test. So I think the question is, I mean these have to re represent the bar for like top end batteries and it's a really interesting question to see which is going to do better now i want to show you guys before i start talking about the results if you just want to see the freaking results i've got some pdf documents that i've made that summarize the results for each pack the test protocol and a little bit of background and then show you the major uh, discharge graphs uh, that it can really if you just want to get right to the point there are links to this down in the video description before we get into the results, I do need to put a big disclaimer on here. These test results reflect my test protocol, my methodology. So if I come up with a certain milliamp hour number or a certain C rating for a battery that is different than the manufacturers, that just means that we're using different methodologies to derive them. Nothing about my testing should be uh, compared directly to the manufacturer's C rating or, or milliamp hours because I don't know how they're deriving those, and I don't want anybody to interpret this as me saying their numbers are like wrong in any way. It's just my numbers are mine and reflect my tests. Their numbers are theirs and reflect however they got those numbers. We're just gonna talk about my numbers. So here we're looking at what I call the capacity test. And in this test, I discharge the packs at a 1C rate. So for a 1600 milliamp hour battery, that would be 1.6 amps. And my goal with this test is to get a sense of the battery's capacity when discharged slowly, such as if you were using the battery to power your, your goggles or your ground station or just charge your phone with a USB adapter or something like that. The faster you discharge a battery, the fewer milliamp hours you'll get out of it because the battery in the internal resistance causes more of the energy to be converted to heat. So in this case, the milliamp hours we get, this is really kind of a best case scenario. It, it, if you were to put this on your quad, as you'll see, you get much fewer milliamp hours. The green and red line here is the adrenaline packs, and there were actually, you can see here, two of them. I bought two of each battery uh, to try and get, it would be better to buy 10, 20, 30 to get a real randomized sample, but we don't have time or money to do that. So I bought two of each. And these lines here are the adrenalines, and this line here is the R lines. And numerically, we can see over here in the report, the, uh, the adrenalines discharge an average of 1,527 milliamp hours, which is 95% of the capacity on the label. Now, don't let the fact that it's only 95%, there's actually nothing unusual about that. 
Now, in my experience, the the I think the manufacturers, number one, I discharged only to 3.5 volts per cell or 14 volts. I think that when the manufacturers do capacity tests, they typically discharge lower than that, and they may discharge at a slower rate. So this number is not in any way unusual in, in my experience. It's pretty normal. What is unusual, though, is the result from the R line. The R line discharged an average of 1,582 milliamp hours, which is actually more than their rated capacity of 1550 milliamp hours. So there you go. The R line actually has a lower uh, milliamp hour rating on the label, but it actually discharged more milliamp hours in this testing. What we're looking at here is what I call the C rating test. And in this test, the battery is discharged at 10 amps down to 3.5 volts per cell or 14 volts for a four cell battery. Then it's discharged at 20 amps. Then it's discharged at 30 amps. And we keep doing this until uh, I decided just as an arbitrary threshold until the battery fails to deliver 50% of its capacity as derived in the capacity test. So as you discharge at higher and higher rates, you get fewer and fewer milliamp hours out. There's more voltage sag and the test ends sooner and sooner until finally you stop testing. For the adrenalines at 50 amps discharge, the batteries discharge on average 968 milliamp hours, which is 63% of their capacity. That took 71 seconds. And that is the, let's see, this is the 50 amp test right here. We can see the two batteries. These are two different tests for two different batteries. We can see what that discharge curve looks like for the 50 amp test. In 60 amps, the batteries discharged on average 709 milliamp hours, which is only 46% of their capacity in 43 seconds. And so I call this, I've created the JB rating and we're not gonna go with C rating. We're just gonna go with a continuous discharge amp rating. And this battery is by my standards, a 50 amp continuous battery. That means when you discharge it at 50 amps, you will get more than half of its rated capacity out. Less than that, it's still, you, you could draw the line somewhere else and say, well, we're gonna draw it at 40%. We're gonna draw it at 20 seconds of discharge. The battery obviously is still completely usable at higher discharge rates, uh, but if we're gonna call continuous discharge, for me, that's a good place to draw the line. It's important to note that in the 30 and 40 amp tests, the battery exceeded 135 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which uh, I, somewhere between, somewhere around 150 degrees Fahrenheit is where I believe the battery's internal stuff starts to break down and you get a serious risk of a fire. Uh, in my testing that I did previously, I found that few batteries got above about 135. Just, I had a big random sample of batteries that I tested and relatively few of them got above that temperature. So I decided that 135 degrees or higher, I would note as unusual. It's not inherently unsafe, uh, but it's, it's a little unusual. I would call that battery getting a little hotter than I would normally expect. You may be surprised to find that it only did it at the 30 and 40 amp. Why didn't it do it at the higher discharge rates? Don't they get hotter? And the answer is yes, but the test also ended sooner. So it had less time to build up heat. Now we're looking at the same results for the tattoo R-Line. In the constant current test, the R-Line did just a little bit better. Whereas the adrenaline was only able to uh, reach 50 amps by my standards, the R-Line reached 60 amps, 60 amps discharging 952 milliamp hours or 60% of its capacity in 58 seconds. At 70 amps, they discharged an average of 258 milliamp hours. So basically here's the 70 amp test right here. And you can see the 60 amp test, eh, it's doing pretty good. But then in the 70 amp test, bleh, it just drops off a hill. Um, so this battery by my standards, I rate it at 60 amps continuous discharge. The next thing I did was what I call the pulsed discharge test. And in this test, we discharged the battery for five seconds, then let it rest for five seconds. And the idea behind this test is that some batteries may not do as well at a long sustained discharge. They may be more like punchy batteries, although I hate subjective terms like that. So if there's a battery that's better at sort of getting hit and recover and hit and recover, we wanna give that battery a chance to, to show itself off. I didn't just make that up. They're, they're, the internal structure and chemistry of the battery means that some batteries are better at short bursts and other batteries are better at sustained bursts or sustained discharge. So we do five seconds on, five seconds off. Uh, and what I'm looking for, and again, this is just an arbitrary line that I decided is three completed pulses 
of five second discharge. So we can see right here, this red line is the 80 amp discharge for the Tattoo R line. And we can see it did one, two, three discharges and did not fall below the threshold of 14 volts. In fact, it did four. Whereas at 90 amps, the green line, it didn't even complete one, it was done. So in terms of pulsed discharge, we call this, I call this an 80 amp battery. Here we're looking at the same test for the Thunder Power Adrenaline. Uh, this is the 70 amp discharge and we can see it did complete one, two, three, four. So it's more than the three that's required. At 70 amps, it completed four discharge cycles and at 80 amps, it completed not even one. So for the adrenaline, we say that the, the, uh, as a pulse discharge, this is a 70 amp battery. Now there's a little bit more that I wanna say about the testing. You know, I'm calling this a 70 amp pulsed battery or for the R line, I think it was an 80 amp. And it, obviously we discharge at way higher than that. You know, 130, 120 amps is really not that unusual. But that's, there's two things about that that need to be noted. Number one, that's for a very short period of time. So oftentimes it's, it's for less than a second or two before you back off the throttle. Uh, and I'm doing five second discharge. So again, I'm intentionally stressing these batteries a little bit differently than we do in real life to try and, to, I'm trying to make these results conservative because I'm tired of inflated numbers, I'm tired of test protocols that produce inflated, unrealistic numbers. I'd rather tell you that this is a 70 amp battery and you go out and fly it and you can pull 120 amps from it than, than the alternative. The other thing is that uh, because of the, the nature of my test setup, I have a little bit more wire between the battery and the tester than you usually will on your quad. I've got about six to maybe eight inches of wire coming from the XT60 to the, the test machine. And then it transitions to like two gauge wire, my wire that, that's 12 gauge. You can't, you can't solder two gauge wire to an XT60, not that I'm aware of. So there's a little bit more resistance in my wires than there would be on your typical quad, unless you crazy guys out there have really long battery leads. And so there, because of that, at the higher amp ratings, the, there's gonna be more of a difference between my tester and your quad. At the lower amps, there's less loss in the lines. So I, I want the tests to end at lower amps. I don't wanna inflate the amps and have lots of loss in the lines and make my numbers slightly more. I think my numbers are more realistic and more, if, if we're testing at lower amps. And I dare say a battery that can hold 70 amps for five seconds is also gonna be better at holding 120 amps for two seconds. It's just less stress on my machine and, and it just produces better results. Now there's one more test that I know you guys are dying to see. And that's the test where I take Evan Turner, Heads Up FPV, I take his black box data from him ripping around the track and I replay it through the machine to stress the battery in a more realistic way than just doing like a constant discharge. And I'm sorry to tell you that that is not gonna be in this test. So here's what happened. Uh, I had him calibrate his current sensor using the milliamp hours out, milliamp hours in method. And he calibrated the current sensor on his quad. And I told him he has like six of the exact same quad that he takes to races. And I said, no, you don't need to calibrate them all individually. Just take calibrate one of them and copy the number over. Well, it turns out there is more variation in the calibration of his flight controllers than I expected. And the quad that he actually used to create the data, the current sensor was reading way high. It was reading like 160 peak. Uh, I'll tell you this. It said he took out like 1950 milliamp hours out of a 1550 pack, which clearly is, is not right. Now I thought I was still going to be able to use that data. If you look at the top of the graph, this is a graph of his, his amperage data. And do you see how the top of the graph is just chopped off here, right at 157 amps? We're coming off the top end of what his current sensor could measure. And it means that we just, we've sliced, we can't just scale this down because we've sliced off the data here. The data is just basically completely unusable. So I'm still intend to do this going forward, but I need to work with him some more to get it, make sure it's calibrated correctly and to just regenerate the data. And I wasn't able to, I didn't want to hold these results in order another three weeks in order to do that. So that's where we're at. Disappointing, but I, the results, I mean, let's go look at the results. Getting back to the, this particular test, uh, I got to tell you, I was surprised. I really expected these batteries to be closer. Honestly, they're both top-notch batteries, but it was clear from the very beginning of the test 
that the R line was doing better than the adrenaline. Uh, and it, it's even more surprising because the R line is actually cheaper. The R line comes in at 38 bucks. Uh, the the tattoo, uh, Thunder Power comes in at 45 bucks. Uh, so yeah, between the two, I guess um, you should buy the R line. Right? It did better in the performance and uh, it's cheaper. And that's pretty much going to do it for this test. I'm trying to keep it short and sweet and to the point and uh, let's help you guys assess the battery's performance. Um, as we get more, to how good were these results? Were these exceptionally good results uh, or were they average? We're going to find out because I'm going to be doing more testing. Uh, the, there's only so many of these packs I'm going to be able to get out. The testing takes a lot of time. I'm, you know, you charge, you let it rest, you let it come to temperature, you discharge, you charge. I'm basically just going back and forth to the tester all day as, as each step ends, but it does take some time to finish the testing. Um, the other thing that I really want to do is I want to do some longevity testing as well to be able to say not only that these packs were good when they were brand new, but also that as they were charged and discharged over time, that which ones hold up. Uh, that's something that uh, it takes a lot of labor as well. And I think I'm going to, after we've done 10 or 15 packs and we've seen which ones are good, I'm going to then go back and do longevity testing on just like the top few and try and make the most of my time. Uh, but for now, we're going to come to the end of the very first battery test results. I hope you guys are happy. If you got any questions, I'm happy to answer them down in the comments. Uh, there's links to these products down in the comments as well. Um, and uh, if you got any uh, thoughts about the procedure or ways that it could be better, you know, I put a lot of thought into it. I, I kind of feel like I've done the right thing, but I'm always open to, I'm always open to criticism. I don't enjoy it, but it's good for me. So let me know. Thank you guys so much. Happy flying.